Last season was probably the worst season yet in the high five journey man where we were expected to finish second expected to be challenging for the title and then we just about got champions league football on the final day of the season because criminese messing up and us and juventus leapfrogging them get to third and fourth in the competitions it was a bit more successful while we finally won our first copper italia and also getting another runners up medal in the ea sports fc super cup champions league we were knocked out in the quarterfinals and we have a FIFA Club World Cup tournament hosted in France where we were playing against Arsenal, Corinthians and LAFC. Can we do well in that tournament and hopefully make the fans a bit more happier, probably with me. Hello everybody, I'm Matthew Olsen and I'm I Hex and welcome back to another episode of the High Five Journeyman. Now, I've got some important news for you. You might be guessing what it is with the whole announcement that FM25 uh, has now been delayed to March 2025. Big update, I am going to stop the High Five Journeyman now. This is the final season. It's meant to be the final season with Inter uh, Milan anyway. And I thought, okay, we'll stop the High Five Journeyman there because I wanted to be Glory Hunter. Considering FM25 has been delayed till March, I think hacking... If I have the same style as videos as this, maybe a bit more hands approach, hands on approach instead of it being simulated all the time, I might be able to get three to four seasons a week done. But yeah, the end of High Five Dreadman for FM24. It might come back in FM25. Who knows? You know, honestly, though, if I, if FM25 goes from March 25 to November 25. I probably will only have enough space for like three series and some rebuilds. So yeah, uh, I don't think it'll happen next year. But hey, it's been fun while it's been at it. If we go to back to the game though, uh, enough with the updates. Donato Ranch is now a four star reputation manager. It was four and a half star. So because he's had such a poor season, he's gone from four and a half star to four star. So yeah, not good one bit. But yeah, now we get into the game. I'm not going to be simulating the game now. I'm going to be playing through them every single day. Uh, how you normally play the game. Um, when our game comes up, I'm instant resorted. So, wouldn't be able to do any better. I'm still keeping with the same tactic. It's a really good tactic. I can see it doing still really, really well. Just hopefully it can win us some trophies because I want to end this series off with a bang. So the first thing to show you, we've played uh, a couple more qualifiers for the UEFA World Cup Group B with Italy. Now I don't think I'll do the World Cup. What I will be doing is on my Patreon, I'll just put the save up for anyone to use freely without having to pay or subscribe to my Patreon. So you just, if you want to go and download this save and see what's happened with the other clubs, uh, or just play it out a bit longer, or I don't know, play the World Cup and see if you can win it with Italy. I don't know. And uh, if you want to earn that, just uh, it'll be free for anyone to use on Patreon. But as by John, we ended up winning 11 now, and we beat San Marino 5 now. How we didn't get 11 against San Marino when we get 11 against Azerbaijan? Maybe because it was at home to Azerbaijan and San Marino was away, I do not know. But still, four wins from four seasons, 12 points, three points clear of Croatia, who of course we've already beaten uh, at home. So now we've just got to go away from home home to win that as well. So yeah, FIFA Club World Cup. We ended up finishing second, we beat two game, we won two games against Corinthians and LAFC and drew with Arsenal because Arsenal got a better goal difference because they won 7-0 against Corinthians. They get top, we get second. Because of that we were drawn against Barcelona and we lost on penalties. Yeah, if we'd have somehow hoped that Corinthians would lose so heavily to Arsenal, we would have got River and I think we would have beat them. Um, Barcelona is the kettle of fish really and because of that we lost. Uh, in the end, the winner was Barcelona winning the next time to Monaco. Yeah, I'd say a disappointing FIFA Club World Cup. They're even disappointed with it. They wanted quarter final, we only got a second round, so yeah, not good at all. We're about to play our first game of the season, which is actually the opening game against Modena. 
uh, if we go to season preview, uh, we're actually expected to finish third. Napoli are now expected to be a better team than us on paper. And of course, Milan boost being the best team in the whole of Italy by a mile. So yeah, uh, Napoli and Milan are the better teams than us. Hopefully we can go against the odds and win the title this year. And we've got our Champions League ties. So it's against Man City, Bayer Leverkusen, Rangers, Monaco, Barcelona, Juventus, Malmo and RB Salzburg. If we go to UEFA Champions League, we're apparently the 7th favourite for Champions League, if that is how it goes by. Real Madrid are the favourites. The worst team in the whole Champions League by favourites is Malmo, so yeah. I'm expecting to thrash Malmo and hopefully get a top 8, but we never do, so probably top 24 in all honesty, getting into the next round, beating whoever we're facing there and then hopefully getting an easy tie in the round of 16. But knowing you, you are all asking for the transfers, because whenever I put some sort of transfer thing, a transfer window or something, it always gets the most views, but yeah. First off, we sold... So the Sachi um, to El Sad in Qatar, yeah, a bit of a loss, <sighs> a, really, a massive loss in all honesty, 7.5 million, we signed him for 16.5, and even then that could have risen to 18 million, so yeah, disappointing that he was such a low price, but he wanted out, I, I just didn't have a place for him, so yeah, we sold him. And uh, good luck to him. In terms of people that joined, we start, signed Zebo and Lazaro, Lazaro as our backup goalkeeper for £15 million pound coming from Tenerife, where he's been their main choice goalkeeper for two years since he was the age of 16 or 17. Now, we've had to accept first choice goalkeeper, but I assume he'll be happy with backup because of Navarro. Oh, no, not Navarro, Navarez. Navarez, yeah, Navarez, that's it. Getting it all wrong. It has been ages since I touched a save, to be fair. I've given myself a break to do the other save that's coming up next, just to get a few seasons ahead. And yeah, I delayed this. This was meant to come out the same week as last season, but I delayed it for a week instead, just to give myself a bit more time and not stress myself out. But yeah. Uh, another player that joined was Alan Maturo. Comes in from Borussia Dortmund. He was originally a Genoa player, did decently well with them, uh, then he went to Milan, then Borussia Dortmund signed and he's been pretty in at Borussia Dortmund, he's played us, he signed for us for £67 million, pounds, all up front or something like that, I do not know, but four total appearances, one goal, 7.10 average rating, not bad, not bad at all. Then we also signed Unai Goku Zaya, Goku, 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 Kokotzea, 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 do not know how you pronounce his name. We bought him for his minimum fee release clause of £76 million. He had a really good season last year and the season before that he didn't do too badly. He is 20 years old and he's four star coin ability. He's already, I think he fits as there, uh, leading Serie A but he could become world class. Probably by the end of the season if he plays often. Played four times, like I said, he's not done too badly. So yeah, uh, good signing there. David Bottasegi is another player that's joined just as our backup left back, 46 million pounds. Uh, he didn't play often for Bar uh, Brighton the other season or the season before that either. Nor has he played often with Madrid. Nor has he played often at Arsenal. Nor has he played often at Atlanta or Bristol Rovers or Milan or Clermont. So yeah, I don't know why we signed him now that I think of that. Yeah, he's, he's hardly played any games all this seat series, but £46 million, three-star accountability. He's basically the best we could get. Uh, he was also Italian. Uh, he has injured himself out, though. Oh, it's only flow, so it's not that bad. But yeah, he's a uh, backup to regular starting left back. And Fernando Miguel has joined us as our main choice striker, however, stupidly, and I do not know why, we couldn't register him, because it was a extra non-EU um, 
extra non-EU player. So he couldn't be registered. He got unhappy when we put him on the loan list for that reason. And yeah, he's ended up going to Bruce Dortmund, but he's really not happy with me. I think he's now negative or something. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I think he's, yeah, he's distant with me because of me having to loan him out because he would have just rotted in the reserves otherwise. Uh, 20.5 million pound. I don't think that's a bad player for him. Uh, that price for him. And yeah, he would have replaced um, Beardling, Beardling if it weren't for the non-EU. Now, I think the non-EU position and trouble is because of last season. Uh, the director of football, when we were simming, he signed Bentley Dewar, who was English. Edson Crawford, who was English and Jamaican. Ruben Hatswell, who was also English. He was nowhere near any good. And Yusuf Karras, who's um, Zanzibar in English. And he's also counted as an extra non-EU player, even though he joined last season. So, yeah, I think that is the reason why. Um, I don't think we'll be able to watch them for another two years. But, hey, if you decide to take on the save, hopefully we'll have him in two years, if he's still okay with us. In the end, Dean Henson did retire at the end of the season, so yeah, that was why um, we signed Lazaro. But people that also left, we let this guy go, Mortalera, Lopez, Tuso, and Salvo Savi. Salvo Savi could have maybe done a decent job, but he'd already accepted to join Preston. Um, when we had come back, so yeah, we could give him a contract playing the director of football for that. But we also loaned out Murphy Mutumbo. I didn't think he would get into the side, and I wanted him to get better and maybe get to three star, three and a half star current ability. Um, but he's been loaned out to Lons. We sold Salvatore in Sensei. He did his job, um, he was always a backup player for us. Coming in for £7 million, pound. he only played 9 games in the end, uh, but it was very cheap, uh, I know we haven't got a profit for him, but £5.5 5 million for um, Leon, only like a £1.5 million pound loss, it's not bad one bit. Patricio Alberti, could have been our first in plans, he was also loaned out. And then we sold Amal Dej, so that's why we signed David uh, Botasagi. But yeah, Amal Dej was sold to Al Etihad, I was not wanting to sell him, he wasn't wanting to go. But £77 million, pound, rising to £85 million pound if he plays like 20 games. It's not bad for a player who is 31 years old. And you can then get a couple of younger players that can get to his level in a couple of years. Uh, basically his sale allowed us to sign Miguel, even though I know it's a mistake now. And it also allowed us to sign Botsegi. Uh, even though we were already do trying to do the deal when uh, we'd accepted the deal with Dedich. Basically, Dedich, the Bartsegi one deal wouldn't have gone through if Dedich had rejected the offer, but he hadn't, so yeah, he left. Sam Stroud, who could get into our team, could get into our team, was loaned out as well. Ricard, who is a young goalkeeper, he's been with us a few years now, um, he was also loaned out to Tenerife, so we bought Lazaro as our backup, and Ricard's gone out as their main choice goalkeeper for them. Miguel Castaneras, who could have been in our first team plans, he's also been loaned out to Modena. And Gitano Ferratoni has also been loaned out, he could be in our first team plans as well. He's been loaned out, uh, loaned out to Spezia. Ravara also loaned out, could be in our first team plans again. Lorenzo Grelli, Grinelli, another player, loaned out. And then we sold Immanuel Iglesias. He was one of these director football signings in January. Um, we'd sign him for £300,000 from Arsenal, not a bad deal at all. Uh, he then had two, I would say, successful loan outs to sort of B clubs in Cosenza in Udinese. And then Southampton said, you know what, we're going to pay £2.9 million for him. And if he plays one game, you get £3.2 million, which is just not a bad deal at all for a player of his quality. And so, yeah, we accepted it. Uh, and then the loanee that left after the sale of Iglesias was um, Botarelli. He could be in our first team plans, but he didn't have, really have a position. He could really play, so he's been loaned out. And Manini, who, again, same situation as Botarelli. He naturally in a position we don't play. He can play in a position we do play, but not 
naturally, so he won't get picked normally. And yeah, he was just he was just loaned out for a safe day, so he might be able to be bought by Wolfsburg at the end of the deal, I think. Um, yeah, he's got a £10 million optional for each of which uh, I, I'd be happy with if he does go for that, considering we'd only signed for £4.2 million for Milan. He's only ever played one game for us in, what, coming up to four years, so yeah. So they were all the transfers, and we have started off brilliantly. So knock off to the World Cup, where we were a bit disappointed losing on Paris 3 to Barcelona. We were undefeated and won every single game in our pre-season, and we were undefeated and won every single game in our starting season in Serie A, including a 7-0 win against Modena and a 5-0 win against Melanza and a 5-1 win against Atlanta. For some reason, we always completely and utterly destroy Atlanta. I don't know why, it just happens. Even though we've done all that, we're still not first. Milan have got an extra point because they've played an extra game and drawn that against Lazio. Hopefully we can still win and hopefully we can win this title, finally win this title I would say. And we've already got players unhappy, um, Moretto wanted to leave because he wanted to go out of range to Leicester and I was going to accept it but it was like an optional future field, mandatory future field like, I want to say like 2 million. And he's worth 8.5, so I was wanting about 9 million, so I just rejected it. And so he's unhappy for that. But Gustavo Henrique, who is an important player on paper, he's not though, he's a fringe player, impact sub. He's unhappy because we haven't signed him for the Champions League. So it's fast square to a squad player. And for some reason, squad players get unhappy when they're not registered for the Champions League. He's a fringe player, impact sub. And yeah, he's also unhappy. And both of them want to leave now. But they're both staying, but people are unhappy because of that. Not good at all. Actually, because of that, we actually drew against Man City and lost against Cagliari. So already we've already dropped all the way down to seventh. Yeah, I hope this isn't another bad season. I hope to God it isn't. I really don't want it to be. So we've won every single game in our qualification for the World Cup. And because of that, we finished top, a whopping 11 points in front of Wales and Croatia, who don't even qualify for the World Cup, so disappointing from that them in that regard. Bulgaria didn't do too badly, but we're nowhere near us or Wales or Croatia, you could say. Azerbaijan, second worst, San Marino, obviously you're not going to win that type of game, unless it's against someone team like Liechtenstein. Meanwhile, in the league, we're top of the league. 34 points, 11 wins, 1 draw, 1 loss, 27 goal difference, 13 played. Napoli have played an extra game more than us and they're 33 points. However, Milan have played 2 games a game less than us, so if they win that they're now 35. And if we know, uh, so yeah, they could be a point ahead. If we lose that 14th game, they could then be 4 points ahead. So we've got to keep the pressure on and keep winning all the time. Milan are actually undefeated so far in the season, only getting two bad results against Cagliari and Lazio in draws. Yeah, and we've actually fallen down now to second. Not to be over the under-expected because, yeah, we were always going to be a point behind if Milan had won. Uh, however, it's now two points behind them. They've all, every team's played 19 or 18 games. Yeah, um, we're a bit points ahead of Napoli, so it's, I don't think they're going to be a threat unless we have a really poor for the form. But it's just having to defeat Milan. Like, if it's if we have a good season, we're always being picked to the post by Milan. If we have a bad season, it's always Napoli winning it. So, yeah, <laughs> it's just tough luck in this league. It really is. However, we've also got a load of people unhappy. Gustav Isaacson, as you can see, I've now added the face pack because of FM25 being delayed. I thought I can't go another six months on with that face pack, so I've just added the face packs now. Um, but yeah, Gustav Isaacson is unhappy because he wants to go out on loan to score a permanent move. Um, Bonato is also unhappy because we made it made him become a squad player and he got unhappy over that. Uh, I think as he was a star player and he was unhappy over that game time so I've just reverted it to squad player because <laughs> he's a squad player he's not an, a star player and uh, Glyn Price he's also unhappy wants to get more playing time so he wants to go out alone and Ignacio Corti or one Ignacio Corti 
is also unhappy, wanting to help go on, want to go alone to help score a permanent move. And um, the only one I'm willing to loan out on the price just for game time, not to be loaned out and sold. Um, I'm Ignacio Corte, who will be loaned out with the aim to be sold next season if I had continued it and the save at least. Might continue it in spare time, I don't know, but I've got another save going on, uh, which I'm enjoying quite a lot. But yeah, um, January now, I'm actually making the transfers because I'm swimming the games myself, so hopefully we can win in the January market and do well and get rid of some of these players and get more players that are going to be happy with their squad roles in, I don't know. Maybe if we get a deal for Bernard, Ballo Bernardo that's, I don't know, 60, 70, 80 million, I would accept it. And Isaacson, I really don't want to, do want to keep him because he's always overperformed. If we can get 30 million for him, I would sell him. So yeah, a bit over the price tag for them, but I think they're worth that, especially for like a Saudi Arabian team. So the transfers in January weren't that many to be fair. So in terms of all the ones that were gone in January, we'll just load the loanies. Ignacio Corti was loaned out to Ren. Then we also sold Antonio Loren uh, Lorenzini to Roma. I didn't think he was good enough at two and a half star potentiality. Roma came with 2.5 million pounds, rising to three if he plays one game or one international appearance or something like that. And I thought, okay, we'll accept that. And loads more loanies were loaned out, including Massimiliano Moretto, um, who's that play who does, does get into our first team. I've started to train him as DM finally because uh, I started taking over my own training at least for the first team and so I'm training him to be a DM. Yeah I don't think he'll get to be DM before the end of the series so yeah he was loaned out to stand around so at least hopefully uh, and give his price tag up higher um, with the possibility that we could sell him. He's got an £8 million loan fee optional thing so if stad rem decide to say yeah you know what stad rem reams i think it is not rems uh stad reams decide to say you know what we're gonna put in an offer for that i wouldn't be against him going but the only player to sign was a direct football signing in marvin vetter now because i was going through the January transfer window myself I could cancel all the ones who was going in for that were two star or two and a half star potentiality and he was going in for a lot of them and the only one that was actually decent that he was going in for was Martin Vetter I said okay he's two and a half two one and a half star potentiality three and a half star potentiality I would have just gone in for a free transfer because his contract was running out at the end of the season but he had an optional year extension that I didn't want him to hit that so I just gave them I let them give them the money and it wasn't a load of money it was what £130,000 rather than £170 if he pays one game or 20 games or international appearances or something like that I don't think he'll ever get in international appearance but he's not a bad player to be in the youth academy and in terms of the Supercopper we unfortunately lost uh, we beat Milan finally uh, in extra time in the semi-final but lost to Napoli 3-1 in the final uh, yeah uh, Povovic and Chris Kavaskelia Kavaskelia I don't know if that's his name I'm so struggling with Georgian names but yeah those two scored um, three goals all together and we only got one with Mascolo um, yeah um, players are still unhappy um, but Arthur is also disappointed not to join Liverpool now. Uh, yeah, um, they were offering 60 million. I was thinking I could get 80, so I just rejected it. And even then, it was like 60 with 20 up front, 10 on the side, 30 million add ons, which you would probably never get. And I just don't want. I just don't like accepting add-ons. I like accepting if they're add-ons. I like accepting it after like one game appearance because it was locked in. I couldn't then edit it, so he, he's unhappy that he didn't go to Liverpool. Uh, Enzo Millar is also unhappy. He wants to leave um, on loan to score permanent move. And Nicholas Vasquez is also once again unhappy over not being in the Champions League. So yeah, I kind of forgot to say that we uh, were top of the league by the end of the January transfer window. 
and we've stayed top of the league now at the end of January or now at the end of February three points ahead of Milan and we'll play in the same amount of games so not that bad at all in terms of Champions League we uh, did end up finishing ninth uh, in the try to do the knockoff play around where we'd be Marseille barely we won 5-1 on aggregate but lost 4-0 away from home <laughs> well we won 6-5 on aggregate but lost 4-0 away from home so yeah and that was the first leg as well so we were very lucky to have won that thankfully the home leg was first otherwise we would have been knocked out <laughs> now we are in the Coppa Italia semi-final where we've got a game against Napoli in the first leg and second leg hopefully we can win that but yeah um it's going well so far hopefully we can beat Liverpool in the Champions League but I know they're one of the best sides in the world so it might be a bit tough. Yeah, and actually we were completely and utterly thrashed by Liverpool. Lost 5-3 in the opening game at home. And then we ended up going to Cremonese and lost, losing that one now. And then Liverpool away from home, we lost 3 now. So yeah, we lost 8-3 on aggregate there. And we were knocked out in the round 16 by Liverpool. Eek, not good. And because of the loss against Cremonese, which were too busy focused on the Champions League, We've now dropped down to second because uh, Milan won an extra game. I think it's based on the head to head or something. Uh, I do think if we do get the same points, we'll go into a third, uh, an, ex an extra game against them, a third game against them to see who wins the whole tournament and the Serie A. But I don't know. I, I, I don't know how it goes properly. And yeah, we don't win the title again. <laughs> In the end, we were seven points off Milan. Milan won the league with 96 points, we finished with 89, a point in front of Napoli in third, quite far off, Roma in fourth, and Juventus in fifth. In the end, Atlanta get relegated alongside Monza and Udinese, so we don't get a, a free six points against Atlanta like we always do, which is unfortunate, but oh well. But yeah, it didn't go out, it didn't go badly. I think because we were focused on Liverpool game, we lost to Cremonese and that cost us. Uh, in the end, we have won the Coppa Italia final. Um, we beat Napoli 3-1 on aggregate and then beat Cagliari for the extra time, so not bad there. So at least we get some silverware, but yeah. The draw against Casenza messed us up, as well as lost against Milan. And it was Milan right there, there where they won the title. And they actually thrashed us 4-0. Oh my god. Yeah, we end the season disappointingly in second without winning a Serie A, without winning the Champions League. We were sure we won a Coppa Italia and the Super Cup, and doesn't matter, but it would have been nice to at least won two trophies as in the Italia and the Serie A, but. Oh well. The season ends at least on a tiny bit of a high that we won a cup. But I think the series has been uns kind of unsuccessful. It kind of shows you that maybe holidaying is harder than actually instant resulting or playing the games. Because I find to have no problem winning trophies when instant resulting or playing the games of myself. Mostly because instant result I do well. And if I don't do well in the actual games, I then just swap tactics or change tactics and it works. In terms of this, you can't really change tactics on the fly because you're just simming them through, holidaying through all the games. And because of that, it's harder. It's been, still been successful. It's still been successful. We've played, what, 10 seasons now of this save. And it ends on the 10th season. If we go to our history, I'll just do that quick history after retirement. We had total game time of just under 4,000 days. In turn, in the end, 65% of it nearly was holidayed. Ended up getting just under 40 million on our total career earnings. Longest time at club was 17, 78 days. And shortest time was 754. Yeah, highest transfer fee spent was against Navares. And highest transfer fee received was Dead Itch. So not that bad. And we've paid two twenty-five million pounds for agents. Oh my god. Um, but if we go to best players, because I always show you that, I've forgotten to show it yeah. Um Noves was our main choice goalkeeper. Lazaro did play a few of the games, but yeah. Bernardo was 
did well and he's still unhappy. Garitani was a youngster that we decided to start playing last season or this season. He's out and a half star comfortability, so he's really improved. Uh, Pejanovic was alongside him most of the time, alongside Bustagi. He wasn't meant to be our first choice, but because he was so good, he ended up being our first choice towards the end of the season. Uh, Lavia and Aquina did well, but we also got a load of people in that position as well. Isaacson did well when he did play. Carboni did well when he played and was most of the time. 23 goals, 10 assists. Then Price did well considering he was mostly playing off left wing when other people were tired. Angus did well considering he only played the game but he did get four goals. Um, Braga, he came off of the bench a lot of times and didn't do too badly. Uh, got Texier, he's now four and a half soccer uh, at 21 years old. Beedling, he was started off well. Look at that average rating at the end in the last five games. It was awful end of the season. So because of that, we swapped Glenn Price as left winger and Angus as the striker and completely dropped Beedling from the side. Henrique maybe could have done better. Uh, Mascolo, who is another player that he will try to stop starting. Uh, he was two star Kundalati, five star potential at the start of this season and we've played him so often he's our three star Kundalati for an half star potential at this. He's not too bad though, he's 20 years old and it's breakout season. Mudrick, brilliant as always. Ugolini did brilliant as well as our right back. Um, Manzi didn't do too badly either uh, as our left winger and can also play at right ring. Aaron Buru, who didn't play as often, but still got 10 assists. Uh, Mudrick got 29 assists and 12 goals, and Bidlin got 18 goals, so they were the highest performers. Vasquez played a few times, and I think he's still unhappy. No, he's not unhappy anymore. Miller didn't do too badly. If Ellen was doing another season, he would be sold. Company didn't do too badly. He's a decent backup option. Machuro, um really didn't do too badly either. As I said about his last left back. And uh, Guerra got 14 goals. He didn't do badly at one bet. And other people, Gasparini didn't play one game. Um, but he was our third choice, so I expected him. Diamandi did well. Uh, he's now injured though. And then all the loanies, looking at the loanies, Moretto did good, Menini did decently, Bottarelli did good, Inacio Corti did good, uh, Hatsmore did awfully, Crawford did awfully, I'd say. Um, actually, no, he was average. Elvis did well uh, last few games, but not well on the average range. And Miguel is now four and a half star potential ability, or current ability, I should say. So, yeah, not he, he was. Next season, he'll be, like I said, main choice. If you decide to take the save over, if you go on to my Patreon and just download it for free. But, yeah, that is the end of this episode and the end of this series. So, next episode, whether it'll be sometime this week or next week, will be um, Glory Hunter. I'm doing it, well, like I said, at the start of the episode, I'm going to be starting off with zero rep, zero badges, all five leagues loaded, all of the top five links in Europe. By the way, I've been Matthew, also in Summer Hanks. If you have enjoyed this video, like the video. If you have enjoyed it and you've watched some of my videos, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for push notifications so you never miss an upload. I think, hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get to 180 now before the end of FM24. <laughs> I like to think I can get to 100 or even 200 by the end of FM24, who knows? Uh, but 180, I would say by end or mid of November, I'd really enjoy. So if you see me on 179 and you think my videos are good, just hit the subscribe, it doesn't cost you anything. You don't even have to do the hit bell for push notifications, but it'll just get me to 180 subs before mid November. And yeah, I'll be very happy and thankful for it. But yeah, I've been Matthew, also some hacks, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks, Sandgal. Bye, everybody.